Welcome to the first lesson of Abacus. This is... In this lesson, all we're going to do is really just kind of get a feel for what the Abacus is. Um, some of you may have heard a little bit about it and may have, I don't know, know that it's ancient and, and that Chinese people used it or something like that. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about the history of an abacus so you know exactly what it is and what it represents and why it's such an important part of history and also why it's still used today. The abacus is still a very, um, though, although it's an ancient tool, it's still a still a widely used tool in many parts of the world. So the first abacus uh, you could say was a sand pile, if you want to think of it better like that, a portable sand pile. Uh, the first, uh, what they would do is they'd have a tray made out of clay or wood and have a thin layer of sand in there. And this sand, they would spread out and I guess you could say they would use it a little bit like a chalkboard or something like that before they wrote on anything. They would just mark with their fingers or with a, a stick the, whatever marks they needed to mark to indicate what they were counting. And that was kind of the earliest known abacus because um, abacus is actually a Latin word meaning sand tray. And although, you know, what you see here is what we think of as a modern abacus, the word abacus actually means sand tray. And the word originates with the Arabic word, I don't know how to say it really, but ABQ, which means dust or fine sand. So after that, as you can imagine, maybe technology imp improved a little bit and they moved beyond sandboxes and started using pebbles. And there was some where they used pebbles in the sand. And instead of drawing in the sand, they would set a pebble in the sand. Then, moving on a little bit beyond that, once they got good at working with metal and all that, they created an abacus that uh, had little grooves in it that the marble could slide up or down and allow them to count based on the position of the marble. And, and this started to look a little bit similar to what we see today in the abacus. So eventually they came up with a bead abacus, the, ones on, uh, the one like you see today that has, you know, where these beads are on rods. And it was, you don't lose the beads as easily. They're, they're attached to it and they can't fall off. You can imagine how that might be a benefit to not lose your counting beads. All right, let's talk a little bit about the abacus, the parts of the abacus and how it works. Right in the middle here, we have what is called the beam or the reckoning bar and when using an abacus a bead only gets counted when it's touching the reckoning bar or the beam so this bead gets counted when it's touching the reckoning bar or the beam and the beads up top also get counted when they're moved down towards the reckoning bar now these these beads up here are called the heavenly beads these beads are worth five down below in the earthly beads, the or well down below, these are called the earthly beads. And earthly beads are worth one each. So up here, this one's worth five. These are each worth one. What you see, you'll see something else here. There's a little dot. There's always going to be a little dot every three rows. So there's not one here, but there would be, anyways, every three rows, there's going to be a dot. And that, that marks, so we understand, that, that shows how the numbers are broken down or what they represent. You'll also notice that in this, this Sorbonne, and that not everyone, not all of them will have this, but I like the ones that do, that cha also change colors every three beads so you can see, or every three rows of beads, so that you can see this division of three. I mean, think about how we write numbers, and we always divide them into threes. If you write the number 100, uh, it's just going to be 100. Zero, zero. If you write the number 1000, we generally put a comma after the one, so it goes 1, comma, 0, 0. If we write the number 13,320, it goes 1, 3, comma, 0, well, three hundred three two zero. 
if we write the number, for example, 23,456,789, it's broken down into those groups. Let's talk about how we're going to count with the abacus. A bead is only counted when it's touching or up against this reckoning bar when it's moved to the middle. In other words, the top beads are only counted when they're moved down, and the bottom beads are only counted when they're moved up. So let me see that again. Let me say that again. A bead is only counted when it's touching or moved up against this reckoning bar or the beam. So a bead is a top bead, a heavenly bead, is only counted when it's moved down. And the bottom, the earthly beads, are only counted when they're slid up. Now let me, let me point out one other feature that this abacus has. Not all of them will have it, but this one comes with a handy little button right here. I like, I like that because to clear, to clear your abacus, all you do is tip it down and hit that beam that that clears it all so it doesn't it doesn't matter wh what your beads are doing that clears it now if your abacus doesn't have that uh if you had one at home and like if you're one of those awesome people in the world and just happen to have an abacus laying around uh let's if you don't have that the way you clear your abacus from some large crazy number like this is tip it down like that and then with your finger clear it like that. That's how you clear an abacus without one of these beam things here. Let me do that again. So we have some crazy number here like that. Tip it down. Run your finger off. And you always do it left to right. That's how you clear it. In general, if you want to keep with good abacus technique, and it's going to move faster. If you, if you learn these things from the beginning, you'll be able to manipulate the abacus faster. Is You only use your two fingers, your thumb finger and your index finger. And the thumb finger, its only job is to move beads up. That's its only job. The index finger moves things down. And his job, the index finger here, he can, he's the only one that can touch the heavenly beads. Thumb can touch the earthly beads, and he can only move them up. But the, earth, the index finger can touch both. He can move that one down and up like that, or he can move those down like that. That's how it works. So once again, you're only using these two fingers. The thumb moves them up. The index finger can move them down. He can move the heavenly bead up or down, but the thumb can only move them up. The index finger moves them down. Or if you can clear them all like that once again.